City Commission meeting on February 21st is called to order. Roll call, please. Here, Commissioner Freeman. Present. 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 Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Kelsey Lance. I and we do our address for yep. street name. So I live on West Summit Street in Livingston, Montana. I am the middle school art teacher here in town, and I um, just kind of have a proposition to make with one of my students here. <laughs> We've been discussing this and just are really excited to um, kind of plant this seed and see what happens with it. So um, art's always been a really important part of my life and it's helped me to express myself in ways that were very necessary. And I've seen that um, growing up and with other people, not just with myself, the importance of it. And so um, I'm, here to propose uh, a public art mural here in town um, and to kind of see if we could get something like that started here to help beautify this town and to even help some of the youth here. There are amazing benefits to, you know, to involving more people in the community. It helps to, um, I guess, build a safer sense of community and to give people pride in their work. And I, I want to involve as many um, people as possible in this, especially with the youth here in town, because there is a huge value to that. And I think these students uh, seeing their work in public even um, and working with one another, collaborating, it's a big part of life and it, there's skills that will help them develop and grow. And I think that it would just be a lovely thing to see some works of art here in town that, yeah, I don't know. I just, <laughs> it would just be great to share that with people and with the city too. Um, so I would like to be a part of a project like that. So Thanks, that's Kelsey. what I got. <laughs> Thank Kelsey. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Emmett Chandler. I live on West Montana Street. Uh, I'm a sixth grader at SUMS Middle School. I am here to speak about a mural I would like to create under the underpass at South B Street. Um, I walk through that underpass. I actually did it today, and I see the walls. And I'm like, man, it's so bland. And so. I was thinking about that. And then in art class, um, we did a graffiti project where we had to write our names in a graffiti style. And that got me thinking about that spot again. Um, and every once in a while, I see graffiti there, but then it gets erased, you know. Um, and I think if we made a planned mural to both beautify the space as well as prevent um, graffiti artists. Um, also, we can create a mural that could celebrate Livingston's past, if that's something you want to do. Um, my mom recommended a piece from Bruce Lance, and she was super excited about it. So um, she talked to the parking trails, who then talked, I think, talked to you guys, who then had me come and be here about what I wanted to do with it. So um, murals and art can really bring the community together. Um, uh, they invite people to slow down, enjoy the peace and their surroundings. And then this is the part I'll forget, so I'm gonna read it off. They encourage more people to walk, which can bring economy to our town, more foot traffic in local businesses, 
and is combined with the Acme Transportation Plan and growth policy. I've, I also hear there's talk of creating a mural map, and if this mural is done, I would like to add it to the list. Um, murals also encourage people to keep spaces clean and take care of them, which um, in turn makes them safer. They also can encourage conversation and thought. This is why I would love to start a mural project. Thanks. Thanks, Emmett. We normally don't do back and forth with folks to get public comment, but I'm the chair and I get to make exceptions. And so, <laughs> and so we will make an exception for this time. Um, I want to share with you that I also walk under that underpass and I walked on it on the way here. And I also think similar thoughts as you. And also, good job listening to your mom. You should keep doing that. Yeah. Um, commissioners, we did, Grant and I did have, Mr. Gager and I did have the good fortune of meeting with Kelsey. And she talked to us a little bit about Emmett's ideas. And Mr. Gager gave her some feedback on how she might proceed. So I was hoping we could get some feedback from the commission and maybe hear from Mr. Gager before we move further into public comment. Does that work for the four of you? Yeah. Okay. Do any of you want to give feedback on what you've heard? I have, I have to, but you know. Um, Emmett, you're an incredible public speaker. Good job. That was incredible. It's a lot from like doing school presentations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you did your research too, so that was amazing. Um, my mom did most of it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, good job listening good, to your mom. Good job listening to your mom. Um, but no, I love the idea. I know Chris King probably with Explore Livingston has been doing some working on murals in the downtown area. So it might be a great way to get everyone connected. Um, and I know that she is really passionate about public art as well. Um, so that might be a good connection um, for everyone as well. But I think it's an incredible idea. So I mean, I hope that we can find a way to move some of this forward. Cool. Yeah, Commissioner Schwartz. Um, Emmett, is there currently artwork on, um, at the underpass now? There used to be. It's a there was a mural there at one point, wasn't there? Or there was. Yeah. It got painted it's, over. It's got been painted over because it got trashed. And it's right. It's a blank slate waiting. Yeah, cool. It's like big and tan. Okay, I couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There was a mural yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, that'd be an awesome place to start, too. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't really know if the city has control of that area or not. Or We can ask Mr. Gager. Yeah, when time mm -hmm. comes to Great presentation. You yeah. got me convinced. So what, whatever I can do to help make it happen. Commissioner oh. Freeman, do you want to add to the No, we did good. He did good. He did good. <laughs> yeah. And for what it's worth, um, Emmett's mother, Allison, Shannon Lear, recently served on Parks and Trails. Oh, oh nice. Awesome. But she's not on there anymore. Fantastic. Yeah. Mr. Gager, did you have comments you want to make? Uh, yes, uh, as to the chair pointed out, we have to meet with Kelsey on uh, on this request. And uh, as luck would have it, the underpass is, is just about the only bridge in uh, in the city of Livingston that we have any control over. Um, and so, you know, there are there are a few ways. It, it sounds like the commission is interested in potentially seeing something on the underpass. So, um, you know, I, I would offer that the staff and I can put together a, a quick request for proposals. And because there may have, as well be other communities who sort of have had similar ideas and, um, you know, whether it is all one mural, several murals, who knows, but, you know, staff and I could put together a quick request for proposals and then and it could, could put down kind of some, words on paper and maybe some some uh descriptions of what you might consider drawing there and and other proposers could as well and then we could go through a, a public process to work through creating a mural and then uh as emma pointed out those murals and locations like that can be graffiti from time to time so certainly we would want to work in the anti-graffiti coding to preserve the, the quality of the painting if we do go that route but uh we'd, we'd be happy to put together a request for proposals and, that's the commission's way. Mm -hmm. I see okay. affirmations all around. Okay. I got five thanks. head nods. Yeah, here, thanks, so. Mr. Gager. Thanks, Emmett. Thank, Thank you, Emmett. Thanks, Emmett. Emmett's supporters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and now we'll resume our regular order for folks that don't have early bedtimes. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody else that wants to give public comment. Um, and please just remember if you could sign in on the sheet, that would be super helpful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
fun idea. Mm -hmm. Keep government fun. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Rusty Trespass, and I live at 989 Swingley Road, Livingston, Montana. City Commissioners, City Manager Gager, fellow members of the public, I stand before you today to express the need for better care of the Park County Senior Center building. As we all know, the building is a vital part of the community, and it plays a crucial role in the lives of the seniors in our county. The mission of the Park County Senior Center is to promote the well-being of our aging population. It is imperative that we do everything in our power to make sure that this mission is fulfilled. As many of you know, the Senior Center building has seen better days. It is in dire need of repairs and upgrades, and without proper attention, it will only continue to deteriorate. This is unacceptable, and it is time that we take action to ensure that the building remains a safe and welcoming place for our seniors. I urge the City Commissioner, City Manager Gager, to communicate with the Park County Commissioners take a closer look at how we can better care for the senior center. This building is not just a physical structure, but it is a symbol of our commitment to our seniors and to the well-being of our community. The seniors who depend on the center deserve nothing less than our best efforts to ensure that they have a safe, comfortable, and welcoming place to spend their days. One way we can do this is by investing in necessary repairs and upgrades. Now, this may include fixing the fire suppression system, so that our seniors can remain safe. Updating the heating and cooling systems or repairing and replacing or updating just general things of need. These improvements will not only make the building safer, but they will also make it more inviting for seniors, encouraging them to take advantage of the programs and services offered there. Another way that we can care for the senior center is by supporting and having good communications with the board and the people that work there. These dedicated individuals are the backbone of the center and they deserve our support and our recognition and providing them with the resources that they need to do their jobs more effectively will not only improve the services they offer, but it will also ensure that they are able to continue to serve our seniors for years to come. In conclusion, I urge the City Commission and City Manager Gager, in collaboration with the Park County Commission, to take a closer look at how we can truly make the building a place that promotes the well being of our aging population. This building is a vital part of our community, and it is our duty to ensure that it continues to serve our seniors for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Rusty, for Thank coming you. and bringing it to our attention. Um, I just want to ask a quick question. Mr. Gager, do you have any? jurisdiction or role to play with the building, do you know? I'm not super familiar. I, I am not aware and I have, that is one of few groups in town that I have not had any contact with and it is on my notes. That they're, all, they're slipping away, no one's no one's paying attention to them right now. So the senior you, center has you, donation jars at the gas station. So Mr. Gager, what do you, do you need anything from the commission before we move on if, if you need? No, no, I'm, I, I'll give them a call tomorrow and Because I do know another commissioner has brought this up recently too. Yeah, there's a, I was on the board for two or three years, uh, way back when we had that place humming. Yeah. Um, I also, I think I told the uh, city manager, uh, there's tenants running out of that building and they're not being taken care of with the problems that the building has. So that's another, another issue. Bob Siegel has his business there right. on the side street. Mm -hmm. He also has a problem, which I can tell the police department that there's uh, limited parking downtown. Mm -hmm. And when you have a store, there's very few places on those side streets for people. To, but the people park there for the whole half a day or a day, and it just mm -hmm. takes away an awful lot. So uh, this issue is, but that, that, at the time when I was involved with the building, we were, were very conscious, did an awful lot. We put the solar, we did a lot of things mm -hmm. at that point. And then all of a sudden it started to mm -hmm. slip away. So there is a need to look this thing over and come up with a solution. Yes, it is a vital, mm -hmm. uh, vital thing, especially for those people of that age. They have very few places right. to hang their hats. So it's important. Yeah, I, thank you. Yeah, I yeah, do. Thank you. Okay. Well, you're good and you can bring it back to us if, you, if there's some more we can play or give us an update. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank right. you, Rusty. Yeah. Thank you, Rusty. Um, anyone else that wants to give general public comment tonight? Come on up, Lindy. Join us. 
I have so much on my mind. Is this the meeting where you guys are going to discuss the dog ordinance? Do God? Yeah. That is not on the agenda. This meeting. Oh, I must have had the wrong date. It um, was on Facebook. Uh, there was something in the newspaper, I think, on it, but it's not on an agenda right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you can still give general public comment on anything that's not on the agenda that the city has jurisdiction over. So you're good to talk about it. Well, um, I was just prepared to just observe, but isn't there a meeting at the library in a little bit on the downtown business district thing? Or do I have the wrong day on that? Mr. Gager, do you know? You know, I am unaware of that. It's the downtown business thing, and it's starting at 6.45, and I wrestled with which meeting to come to. Hmm. I don't know about that. Yeah, Sorry. That on? I'm um, that. Do, you, do you want to just let us know? I don't know your name. I'm sorry, but... If my name is Martha, the public department. Okay. It was canceled today because of the weather. Oh, well, canceled. Oh, sorry. It will be rescheduled. Okay, good. I can unlock and rewind. Um, okay. <laughs> Did you want to give any comment, though, while you're here? Well, no, I was just going to observe, but now I do because that back door is locked, and um, I called the dispatch, and she unlocked it for me, and now we have to come through which door to come to these meetings. Um, Typically, the front door here on okay. calendar is the. Okay. And the reason for that is, I don't know. I don't know. It's only been, I've come through that back door for 40 years, but everything's changing. We'll Not, everything. Sure doors are Not everything. Not oh, everything. That would be nice. I know. I just get kind of stressed out and I can't get in. And Okay. Lindy, I think you have. My commissioner number. So you can always call it if you're not getting in in the meetings. Oh, I, no, I went to the dispatcher okay. and I don't have a cell phone. I'm a, oh, gotcha. a dinosaur. <laughs> um, is there anyone else that wants to give general public comment tonight? No. Well, yes. We done. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I think. No, that's it. We're, no, I was going to say something about the senior center, but that's between you guys. Um, because is there a downtown historic um, fund? Because the senior center used to be the Yellowstone Hotel, and I think at the at the county and state level, there's funds available for that. So I think Mr. it shouldn't be it shouldn't really be unless I'm wrong. It shouldn't be at the city level. Well, I think Mr. Gager's going to look into it and see okay, what he can find No, it's okay. It's a good question. <laughs> Okay, no, I don't. There's I lots of have anything. There's lots of interesting things that are not um, obviously one thing or another there in Livingston. Yeah. So they'll dig into it and find out for the Okay, sure. but thank you for seeing that that's unlocked all the time. Oh, and there, oh, there is plenty of housing or parking right across the street from the senior center. Carter Bain has that public parking lot for the senior center. Are you aware of that? Well, I'm not complaining I, about the parking at all. I, oh, I appreciate you I'm, all. I just want to go through the agenda the and, and maybe we can. The, Lack yep. thereof of oh, things okay. working. Last two weeks ago, there was a 24 hour on call because their fire suppression system wasn't working. Oh, yeah. Um, there's some things that need okay. to be addressed there, and I'm just trying to feel who I need to go to. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep. I don't mean to no, you're good. Back. Mr. Gator's going to look into it and he'll get back to us. So far, he hasn't let us down and everything he said he's going to look into. We actually have to do for us. I trust him. <laughs> so we're good. We've got a good, whatever the, whatever the sports term is for that, he's got a good batting average. Well, um, okay, so we're moving into consent. Patricia. Oh, Patricia's right up. Thank you, Babe. I didn't see Patricia online. Hi, Patricia. Please Hi. Um, start with your name and address, and you can share public comment with us. Yes, Patricia Grabo, 204 East Calendar Street, Livingston. I just want to mention to the City Commission um, the, the uh, Parks and Trails was given the opportunity to take a look at the Bozeman Trail as it comes to Livingston, and they decided it's not a priority. Um, when we, when I was on the city commission, I uh, initiated and followed through on the grant for the Livingston Bozeman Trail connection. I want to say that this is a unique time right now for the city to really take a look at uh, what we almost got when we did the Bozeman Trail connection. Now, the Bozeman Trail came through Livingston in two places. It basically came down Front, front Street. And uh, there are 40 uh, journals of people as they followed the Bozeman Trail to Virginia City. And a lot of them talk about coming through Livingston. The other place in which you could actually see the 
tracks for the Bozeman Trail is on the backside of the mountains. I don't know how to say it. In, in Meg's Road kind of area. So there's two of them. But we always proposed doing it in segments. Now, MRL is at a place where they have some money that could follow through on what we wanted when we initiated the Bozeman Trail coming through Livingston. And that is, at the time, they said they would be willing to basically give a sidewalk area trail space on the south side of Front Street so that you connect the Bozeman Trail connection to the south side of Front Street, which is a safe bicycle trail. And they were interested, they were willing to take that that land and turned it into a trail. Now we've had a young man killed uh, coming along what could have been a trail and he would not have been killed on Front Street. Now we have the possible opportunity right now of going back to MRL and asking for that to, uh, for that trail again and having uh, a Bozeman Trail coming through Livingston on Front Street and that would be a bicycle path that would go from Star Subdivision all the way past the shops to uh, the uh, public to the public works kind of area. It is something that I think is worth considering. If the if MRL would be willing to be able for us to have that trail, this is the one time we would have the opportunity to take advantage of that. So I I think it's worth consideration. Um, what you would do is you would have the trail, and then you would have excerpts from the people that came through the Bozeman Trail, because Livingston is the only town that would actually tell the story about the Bozeman Trail and is significant in in the uh, in the history of Livingston and the Bozeman Trail. So it's it's I'm just saying publicly that it's worth considering looking into uh, having that trail along Front Street and asking MRL for the grant to to allow us to do this. And I can I can send more material on it if you're at all interested. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. I think I I think I got an email from you recently with this information. So thank you. You're welcome. Is there is there anybody else that wants to give general public comment? I don't see anyone. All right, general public comment is closed and now we'll move to consent items. There's four consent items on the agenda tonight. <coughs> Are there any that commissioners want pulled for discussion? I would like consent item C pulled. So I have some questions. Do we have a motion then for A, B, and D? I'll make a motion to approve consent items A, B, and D. I'll second. And then um, if we just vote on this first and then discuss C and then we can vote on C. Okay. So uh, yeah, roll call, please. Chair you. Four. Commissioner Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lane. Four. Motion passes. And then my question on C. Mr. Gager is, oh, you know what? I forgot to amend the minutes. Oh. Well, that would be a fun process question for you. We've already voted on it and I noticed errors in the minutes. I don't need to proceed with that. Oh. I well, just. Uh yeah, unless the city attorney has uh, another recommended option, we can go back and revisit an item. That no, you can go back. Okay. So should I just address the minutes real quick and then? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. I just have to... So on page seven um, of the minutes, it says Connor of the tree board gave public comment. He's actually the chair of the Parks and Trails Commission, or I'm sorry, Parks and Trails Committee. So I just want to 
fix that. It's the top line of page seven. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then right under that, um, everyone else has an organization name, but not Leslie Feigl. So I just want to acknowledge that Leslie Feigl is with the Chamber of Commerce. That's all that I wanted to do with the minutes. So what's the best process now? Do we need to vote on it again? Yeah, I would. Yes. Subject to the subject to those directions. Do we need a new motion? Yes. So can someone make a new motion? I'll make a motion to approve the um, amended language on the uh, minutes from the seventh so we have February a meeting. Motion by um, Schwartz to accept the amended minutes and a second by Lyons. And then we just vote on that. And then that's it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Chair News. Four. Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Okay, now consent item C. Um, <coughs> so I have a question about this parking lot lease. I'm, Mr. Gager, I'm curious why we're renting a parking lot and renting spots in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Chair Newts. Uh, I, in preparation for this item, I, where the historic literature of the city shows that the city and uh, Livingston Daycare uh, came to an agreement in 2014 for the city to lease the parking lot that the Prior to that, the, the parking lot was unused and it was vacant space. And there, the city had received a number of requests um, for you know additional parking resources in the downtown area. This is what we've uncovered. And so the the owner of, of uh, Livingston Daycare, um, you know, had some conversations with the city and agreed to uh, provide that parking asset to the city. And um, at that point, the city. Uh, you know, had received some requests from local business owners and others in the downtown area. And so the city entered into um, agreements with some local businesses and individuals to uh, sublease that lot, if you will, or sublease portions of that lot, spaces of the lot to individuals and businesses in the downtown area. And that's the arrangement that's ex existed for the better part of the last nine years. Um, is that the city leases this specific lot. We have another off street lot on D Street, um, and, but this is the one on 2nd Street, and this one has uh, 40 spaces in it. And so um, the city leases uh, those 40 spaces from the owner, Livingston Daycare, and then uh, again, subleases those spaces out to just private individuals and businesses. Is this, is this the same practice for the one on B Street that we're, we lease it and then we have a list of people? Uh, yes, essentially the same business. Yeah. So I guess I'm curious about process. Like, is this like a lottery or like, I, like I've never seen these, I've never seen like advertising of these spots open to the public. And so I'm just curious since most things that we do are open to the public, like for instance, Emmett came up tonight and we have to open it to everyone. So I'm wondering, is that what we do here too, or? So there was there was an initial process to award the spots. And since that time, there has been a waiting list. And as, as people give up the spots, which does not happen very frequently, um, people from the waiting list are called to fill one of those spots. And so, um, so it is. Uh, it is not the, the the most public or publicly available parking asset. How do you know. how do people even find out how to get on the list? Is there like do they have to like go to the lot and see a sign or? Yes, and then and then come to city hall and then oh, okay. inquire about it. And and we do we do have people from the list that come in on a monthly basis to kind of find out where they are on the list and and all of that. Um, I feel like this is new information to me and I've been on the commission for a minute and so it's interesting I didn't know this was our process um do other commissioners have questions about about this uh commissioner Schwartz thank yeah you. I I assume that we own that property I, I, <laughs> oh, I knew we were leasing it out but I just assumed we owned it I didn't know we were le leasing and then subleasing it so which is fine I if, if, no, don't have a problem with that. So. That's the only thing I I just wasn't aware of that. Um, we didn't know that. So mm -hmm. okay, I yield. Oh. 
Yeah, vice chair Kim. Are we covering our costs with the lease rents with the sublet? Uh, yes. So uh, until the current action to increase the lease, um, excluding staff time involved, the city appears to be making about twenty-five dollars profit on the operation of the lot each year. Uh, again, that doesn't include staff time to process the payments and all of that. And so um, we really, uh, you know, are, are really just renting it out basically at our cost to, to rent it. And so. Uh, Actually, and then you go ahead. Um, I'll follow up on that as well. I mean, I've driven past that lot several times and I think I probably illegally parked in that lot a few times. Absolutely. Didn't it? Um, do you, People, it surprises me that every one of those spots is rented out and being used, if that makes any sense. Um, that lot seems to be em very empty a lot of the time. I, I guess I'm just thinking about the number of shoppers and folks we want downtown and we have an empty lot sitting there, so. For two, potentially. Two, two potentially. I have a... I'm I, yeah, just, that was more something you oracle. Sorry, that was no, but question. something you asked made me realize we're actually, if we're not making money on it, we're breaking even with staff time. Is that correct? We're actually subsidizing certain people that have parking spots downtown. Like mm -hmm. taxpayers are subsidizing a handful of people who have been hanging on the spots potentially for nine years. Oof, that concerns me. Um I wonder, like my perspective is it would be great to see if there's a way that this process could be updated. Um, I don't, my understanding, you know, of the, the will of the public and Livingston is they typically don't like to subsidize for each other. And generally folks like people to pay their own way in the community. So um, that's just what comes to mind. Commissioner Schultz, your hand was up. Um, yeah, I, I, it'd be nice to, um... I don't see needing to make a profit on it, but at least for break even. But um, the purpose of that is to keep the business owners from parking in front of their own businesses and stuff like that. And that's and it, it, it makes it a lot more convenient for business owners to be able to park their vehicle there within a relative close proximity to their business and stuff like that instead of taking up um, to our spaces, which, you know, it's been a struggle. Um, monitoring and maintaining um code enforcement and when we do enforce people get mad you know and but yeah it's it's one of those vicious cycles that we always have and always will have so i mean i'm i'm not looking to make money on it but yeah i definitely make it um cost neutral you know revenue neutral whatever um it takes to do that but i, I find it essential it's kind of like a parking garage but um um looking at it from that you know standpoint um so i want to encourage business owners to park there <laughs> and uh for a uh, time that we the bank did take over that lot when they were using that um mm -hmm. while they were building so mm -hmm. um, but they had to pay for that the bank did so i remember like, that coming before us hmm? did that come before us i don't remember that that was agreement between the city and the bank, apparently. Must not have been through the commission. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't remember. If it would have had commission oversight. Well, at I mean, that if point it has a contract, it's supposed to. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, water under the bridge. Yep. Do you have any? Do nope. you folks have anything else? In Commissioner Lyons or Commissioner Friedman? I would love to see like an update based on some of the things that we've said, if there's other options, especially since there's two lots and if what Vice Chair Kale is saying is the spots are empty and what Commissioner Schwartz is saying is that we need we need those spots being used so that businesses can be, you know, mm -hmm. having shoppers at them. It seems like if they're empty, that's, I don't know. It's There's more of a complete picture with what folks on the commission are saying. So- um, Okay, what you, but yeah, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Commissioner Schwartz. Um, but at, at this point, I think all we're looking to do is to renew this lease. Now that has nothing to do with us. We can ask him for a- process. Right, right. But I mean, right. I'd hate to see this lot. Yeah. 
loses this lease mm -hmm. over, you know, 200 bucks or $300 no. worth of taxes. So can you give us an idea? Of, yeah. Practices considering that concern. Yeah, no, I, I think Commissioner Schwartz um, actually, uh, by way of his comment, has has introduced a, a, an interesting thought of mine, which is that the lease agreement, which is included in the packet mm -hmm. um, attachment, does provide that the the city has the tenant has the ability to manage the lot as we see fit, and so this this current sublease arrangement that the city is involved in exists only because that is how the city wishes to operate the lot. And so um, I would be happy uh, if the commission sees fit, I'd be happy to examine how the city uses the lot and all of the, the leases that we have, the subleases are all on a month to month basis, as is the master lease that we have. And, and so uh, the city staff can look and come up with alternate ways to manage the lot, including potentially uh, allowing public use of the lot by um, by shoppers. And, and of course, that could happen uh, either in a, a paid or not paid way. Um, so if, uh, if the goal was to um, provide convenient parking for um, visitors and shoppers at the downtown, we could do it in that regard. And if the goal is to ensure cost recovery, you know, we could achieve both goals um, at the same time if possible. So it sounds like what you're suggesting is that we can vote on um, consent item C because that's just the lease for the lot. And then you can bring back something else for a conversation in the future about the lots that we're leasing and how we might use them to meet the needs of what the commissioners are saying. Design. Yeah, and, and actually okay. the, the conversation is rather timely. Um, uh, Chief Johnson's not here now, but he and I have had some conversations on parking and parking enforcement, parking resource management in the downtown area. So we can uh, include these lots in those conversations, I would say, and we'll look forward to reporting back to the commission this spring. I think we just touched on one of Mr. Gager's favorite topics, if we remember his interview, go enforcement. <laughs> so <coughs> awesome. So I'm looking for a motion on action item C. I'll make a motion to approve action item C. Second. Motion by Kale and a second by Friedman. Roll call, please. Chair Nance. Four. Then Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyon. Four. Motion passes. Thank you, Commission. We don't have any proclamations on the agenda tonight. No public hearings. Next up is ordinance number 3040, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, amending chapter 30. Article 5, Section 30.50 of the City Zoning Ordinance entitled Signs. Mr. Gager. Thank you, Chair Newtz. The item before you is the um, first time that you have seen this, and I will introduce Jennifer Severson, our Planning Director, to go into more detail about the sign ordinance, but this is one that has um, its origins in the Historic Preservation uh, Commission. And, and their goal of maintaining the integrity of the downtown. So uh, Jennifer, I'll turn it over to you. Good evening, commissioners. Jennifer Severson, um, planning director. Uh, Faith, can you hit the presentation button at the bottom? I'm gonna just blow it up a little. Thank you. Um, this is just a couple of slides to provide a little more uh, background. Um, than what was in the staff report that I drafted for this meeting. Um, I believe Faith provided you with the original staff report that went to the Zoning Commission back in January of 2022. Um, and I apologize, I forgot to forward that to her before I look down. Um, so these slides sort of go over that information a little more clearly. Hopefully. I know. When I do this, I have to get selected. Um, I can just do it this way. Um, Basically, the background on this is that, like uh, City Manager Gazer said, it was initiated by the Historic Preservation Commission um, to allow and actually encourage um, historic sign types in the downtown historic district. Uh, my understanding, and again, a lot of this happened before I came on here, 
um, is that uh, the Historic Preservation Commission was reviewing um, design review applications for signs and consistently seeing that a lot of them were consistent and, and in, in character with um, a lot of the historic signs here, mm -hmm. but they weren't allowed by our sign ordinance. So new signs were not able to mimic the existing historic signs. Um, so um, the uh, Historic Preservation Commission um, drafted the ordinance updates, uh, forwarded it to the Zoning Commission, the Livingston Zoning Commission, that's the LDC you see there. Mm -hmm. um, they approved the text amendment, the proposed text amendment five to zero in October of 2022. My understanding is it went to them originally in January and there was some discussion back and forth. Um, I think some other things happened this summer and mm -hmm. and so and then when uh, the previous planning director left it sort of got set to the side mm -hmm. so um, now we're bringing it back to you um, and we're bringing it to you for the first time for the first reading um, the update is sort of the purpose of the update there's a few reasons behind it um, like I said it allows for and encourages historically compatible signage in the downtown historic district um, things that Livingston downtown is sort of known for, the projecting signs, the wall signs, as you can see a couple of examples up here. Um, it also um, will streamline sign review process outside the historic district. So any signs um, <clears throat> to be installed in the historic district will still need to go through design review by the Historic Preservation Commission. <clears throat> and then outside of the historic district, uh, the sign reviews can happen administratively with staff. Um, also, the enforcement for uh, enforcing the sign code will shift. Currently, it is with the um, building official. Um, and to be more consistent with how the rest of the zoning code is enforced, um, it's, we're proposing to switch that to enforcement by the zoning coordinator, uh, which just means the zoning coordinator would, the zoning coordinator being me at this point, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> would review um, sign plans, sign details. Um, again, if it's in the historic district, that goes forward to HPC. Uh, otherwise, uh, I would look at that before then it would be allowed to go to the building official for a permit. Um, and then lastly, it um, aligns the our sign code with um, a Supreme Court decision on um, restrictions about content-based signage. Um, and that was a landmark decision. And uh, our code now will be compliance with that, um, <clears throat> that decision. Um, this ordinance uh, update will uh, support the growth policy. Um, it um, is consistent with other parts of the zoning code um, or the intent of other parts of the zoning code, chapter 30. And then also, like I said, um, brings it into um, compliance with state County, the federal laws, again, with the, the Reed versus Town of uh, Gilbert decision. Um, also, um, with regards to the Night Sky Protection Act, uh, the proposed ordinance update um, provides some clarification and changes, I think, to the lighting of the signs. So all signs will be in compliance with that ordinance. Um, and then just to hit on the findings of fact really quickly, um, <clears throat> for any zoning uh, regulation update, um, it needs to be made in concurrence with or accordance with the growth policy. So I just discussed, discussed a couple of those. There's a few more. Um, goal 3.3, conserve environmentally significant areas as well as areas, sites, structures, or objects with historical, architectural, or cultural significance. We can all agree that downtown Livingston has quite a few of those. Um, and so allowing those um, those types of historic signs in the downtown areas are just uh, promote that uh, preservation of, of place. Um, another one, chapter 11 um, sort of has a, a couple of things it deals with with the sign ordinance. It recommends reviewing and updating the sign ordinance um, to again, meet the intent of other the rest of the zoning code, chapter 30. Um, it says to update the uh, sign code um, for commercial areas. Um, again, compliance with the laws. Uh, there was another one up there. Can you scoot to the top of this page? 
sorry. Um, and then strategy 2125, bless you. Um, the zoning amendment updates sign codes for all areas of the city, but the focus really of a lot of this is for the downtown historic area for those historic web signs. Um, and then uh, governing body needs to consider reasonable provision of light and air. Um, the impacts anticipated by this uh, ordinance update. Effect on motorized and non-motorized transportation system needs to be considered. Um, lighted signs must not create a safety hazard uh, to vehicular transportation. Uh, minimum sign height has been updated in this uh, to further prevent hazards to pedestrians like along sidewalks or walkways. Um, sidewalk sign requirements updated to promote navigate promote navigation by those uh, with mobility challenges. Uh, another consideration is um, compatible urban growth. The um, the signage update, the ordinance update allows signage that is uh, consistent with historic sign types and design in the downtown historic district. So it meets that requirement. Um, district character and suitability for particular uses. Again, the sign types that preserve the character of the downtown historic district is the focus of this ordinance update. And then um, the body needs to the governing body needs to consider conserving building values and encouraging appropriate use of land. Um, no land use changes are proposed and no impact to building value is anticipated through this. So I'll do my best to answer questions. Um, like I said, I think a lot of this, a lot of the initial discussions were done a few months ago. No, I think Jennifer covered it. Jennifer and I will stand for any questions the commission may have. Do you folks have any questions? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Schultz? Comment. Um, having served on the Historic Preservation Board um, many years ago, um, signage was our, probably our number one thing that we were. Mm -hmm. Wanted to be consistent with and encourage, you know, historically, especially neon and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've read through this whole thing. It, it brings a lot more clarity, clarity and sense to uh, the ordinance. Um, it makes it I me mean, more enforceable and uh, and has that with any document needs to be updated once in a while and makes. Nice work. I like it. Thank you. I, this is entirely Matthew Menard's. Um, mm, okay. We spent a lot of time going through the ordinance language and, and discussion with the Historic Preservation Commission and the Zoning Commission. That's my understanding. So, who knows what it is? Jim Field. Field. Thanks, Commissioner Schwartz. Are we, are we commenting? We're asking clarifying questions. Oh, clarifying? Yep, yeah, because we have to make a motion before we get a chitter chatter. I don't have any questions. Thanks for a good presentation. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. I have a process question. Um, when So when there's signage in the historic district of downtown, does it only go through the committee or does it also go through staff? Uh, it's brought to staff. They submit an application form. Um, and it has to comply overall with the, the sign ordinance in, in section 3050, but it automatically goes to the HPC for the um, sort of the design aesthetics of it. Um, so it's kind of twofold. There's, there's parts of the sign ordinance about what types of signs you can have, height, that kind of thing. The HPC is really looking more for does it aesthetically blend in or is it consistent with the surrounds <clears throat> for that building, that kind of thing. So it just it gets reviewed by both. So it'll, yeah, that's great. That's what I was wondering and hoping since oh yeah, you probably are dialed into all of the nitty-gritty details in a way totally that dialed in. totally dialed <laughs> in. Um I'm looking as Matthew Menard on, sometimes he shows up on our meetings. <laughs> when we summon him on times like this. No, he's not here. No other clarifying questions So, All right, so how about a motion on ordinance number 3040? I move to approve ordinance 3034 to update oh. the city of Livingston zoning code article, article five, section 30.50, oh. signs and authorize the chair to sign an ordinance. Three, zero, three, Before there's a second, I want to get clarity because yeah, I think that the ordinance has 3040 in the agenda, but the staff report, can you just let us know what? 
The ordinance should be 3050 for signs. Did I get that wrong? 3040. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it was transposed. The, the sign point. code is 3050. Oh, oh no, that's, that's right. That's 30. Point. This is the oh, ordinance. Okay. Okay. So, sorry, Mr. Gager. I know they're so close. <laughs> we'll just give Mr. Gager one second. For the final answer. Yeah, it's three zero four zero. Do you want to um, change your motion real quick, Tori, before there's or Commissioner Lyons before there's a second? Uh, I amend the motion. I don't think you have to amend it, right? Yeah. Since we didn't. Uh, I'm referring to ordinance three zero four zero, not three zero three four. Okay, thank you. I will second the motion uh, approving ordinance three zero four zero. Is that clean enough? Okay. So a motion by Lyons and a second by Kale. Thanks everybody for your patience and good catch team. Um, now we'll open it to public comment. So if anybody has comments on ordinance three zero four zero about signs, the zone update, come on up. Because I'm here, do I see my name again? Yeah, you yeah, can just start with name. That'd be great. Swingley Road. Um, only because I'm here, if you guys are going to be looking at signs, I remember it was a while ago, about five, six months ago, this was brought up, and um, the other city manager showed a picture of the interstate looking down into Paradise Valley, and he showed a picture of all the different signs that we have. So, like, looking at Park Street by Matt's Meat Market, looking underneath the interstate, take a look at your signage. If we want to make this place look inviting, um, for the tourists going into the park, you could not just the uh, downtown district. Mm -hmm. Think about that area as well. Thank, Thank you. you, Rusty. That's an incredible memory you have to remember that. Right, I can I can see the picture on my head right now. <laughs> like, oh wow, there's a lot of signs. That's there. a gift. You can paint that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll paint it. Right. Um, any other public comment? Oh, I see Patricia Grabo. Patricia Grabo, you're up. You can come off mute and start with your name and address, please, Patricia. I also um, served on the Historic Preservation Board and um, was on the city commission when we when we passed the Night Sky Ordinance. I want to say that the Night Sky Ordinance never did allow for the kinds of signs that are on Bank of the Rockies, for example, that are moving kind of neon kind of signs. Uh, so I just, uh, I think that has to be taken into consideration when we look at this implementation of this or ordinance. By the way, I don't know if you know that Livingston has over 400 buildings on the National Historic Register. We have more buildings on the National Historic Re Register than New York, Philadelphia, and Boston combined. Uh, so it is appropriate that we keep the historic nature of science both in the historic district and outside of the historic district. Um, that night sky, those um, kinds of neon moving neon signs were never allowed in the original night sky. They just crept in. The school district also has a uh, moving neon sign. So uh, it, it's a matter of these things happening. It's by, with, if we're not vigilant, they happen essentially. So I, I welcome this ordinance. I think it's as with everything, frankly, with Matthew Menard, it was pretty wonderful. <laughs> and uh, appreciate uh, the commission taking a look at at this ordinance. But I, while we take a look at these ordinance, we really have to look at those moving kind of neon signs because they're not appropriate. For, they've never been considered appropriate for Livingston. Thank you. Thanks, Patricia. Any other public comment? Seeing none, public comment on ordinance 3040 is closed. Commissioners, any follow-up questions or things? I saw Commissioner Alliance first and then we'll work our way around. Um, I, I'm really pleased to see this come before us. I think that it's, um, I think the impetus is really clear that, you know, there were, there was a proposal of, of signage that conformed to the character, but the 
the way that the process existed, it didn't allow for that to be approved. And I think that um, inappropriate administrative burdens can sometimes change policy outcomes. And I think that's a good example of that. So I'm glad to see this coming in line with, with the need. Um, I appreciate the comment from the public as well. Uh, I'll never forget the first time I ever went in the Bitter Valley. I was just one of the things, it's it's an incredible, incredibly beautiful natural place, but it is just aesthetically destroyed by, um, uh, what are they called? Billboards. Billboards, thank you. Um, and I think that, uh, I think that signs are an extension of the the character, an extension of the architecture. Um, it's a it's a way that the commercial world creeps into the built environment, and it's important that we, I mean, we have beautiful signs in Livingston, and they they really do improve the built environment in Livingston. The, those that are you know in line with that with the character of our community, but <clears throat> there are examples of of signs that are not in line with the character of our community. Um, and we want to be mindful and, and careful about um, how we we permit those. And I think that um, particularly at the entrances um, of our community, both coming in and going out, uh, as Rusty was mentioning about going down to the park, I think um, those things leave a lasting impression. When, when I think about the Bitterroot Valley, I think about the Bitterroot Mountains, and I think about um, I think about those signs. And so we if people are thinking about signs in Livingston, I want them to think about the ones that are are representative of the aesthetic of our community. So I uh, appreciate this effort and I think it's really important. There you go. Thank you. Commissioner Schwartz. Yeah. Um that, that was a great observation, Rusty. Um I know Sposeman looked at that. That's the same thing on North 7th Avenue years and years ago, a picture of that and just how hideous, you know, it was. And it's taken, you know, they're not there yet, but it's taken a long time. Um, with regards to Patricia Grabo talking about the Bank of the Rockies sign, you know, um, former city manager and I asked each other, how did they just put that up? You know, because it doesn't conform to the nice guy ordinances. So I've always been concerned about our process of mm -hmm. how these signs go around. And um, uh, I, I know it was never, we had the same problem with the historic preservation, preservation district with signage because mm -hmm. some people are leasing the buildings and not the building owner. Mm -hmm. So they don't know what the rules are. <laughs> and um, I think that we've come out a long way on that. So I'm not gonna, rehash that but um it looks like this gives us more teeth to enforce you know you know um enforce these ordinances and uh, and how do we discourage that you know um and the same thing with uh going out the other end of town like um uh like community closet there's one of those mm -hmm. neon signs again you know mm -hmm. obnoxious I, I think, um, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, if we can, uh, enforce the zoning, um, I'm, I'm all for this and cleaning up. It doesn't happen overnight, but, um, it's a good step forward. Thank you. I yield. Before we move to the next commissioner, can we address some of what commissioner shorts brought up? Um, Mr. Gager, and I'm not sure if there was a process for those signs. It sounds like from what I can wish that there ought to be. Can you? speak to some of his concerns? Um, yeah, I, you know, I guess I would <clears throat> just speak generally in the area of enforcement. Um, <clears throat> Jennifer and I have been working quite a bit on enforcement matters mm -hmm. um, and enforcement occurs throughout the zoning uh, code really and throughout all sections of the code, but it comes up pretty frequently in the zoning code. And so uh, we have recently stepped up enforcement efforts specifically with regards to signs as well and reached out to a number of um, property and business owners that have not conforming signs. And moving forward, uh, Jennifer, uh, Chief Johnson, myself and some others have had some conversations on our uh, just general code enforcement mechanisms, whether it's parking, animals, uh, zoning, night sky, um, different sections of our code. And so uh, we are working on some improvements to uh, the code enforcement process 
and uh, excited to share those with you folks, probably more around budget time, um, because that's kind of when that would come into yeah. play. Um, but, uh, but yes, there, there have been some applications um, and, and we've had cases where signs were approved and then a different sign was built. And so yeah. it's, yes, it's, it's clear that we have um, kind of some historical enforcement issues that we're addressing and evaluating. Is that something you can just keep us posted on? Because this has yeah, been absolutely. coming up at least as long as I've been on the commission. So over four mm -hmm. years, we've been. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's like, you know, do you have to get a permit to, you know, do a sign, you know? Sounds like, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There, there is a sign yeah. permit, building permit. And so um, I will I will promise you as we work through the budget process, we will revisit code enforcement. Yeah, and I mean, because it, yeah, it takes time and money. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Enforce it. exactly. <laughs> All right, thank you. Great, thank you also, Commissioner Schwartz. I know this is something you brought up. I remember you bringing this up on historic preservation. Yeah. So, um, Commissioner Freeman. I concur with everything that's been said. <laughs> and Excellent. I think we're, we're moving forward. So I don't know how much I can add to that. That's good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, so it's, it's a big issue and it uh, looks like we're moving. That's, what, that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Anything? I have a a little bit of a question sort of based on this conversation that we've just had about enforcement and some of these signs that were built. I'm sure that there's a grandfather date for some of these that maybe not for others. And if they're past that grandfather date, can you still enforce even though they've been <clears throat> doing the wrong thing for potentially a number of years? Um, yeah, so, you know, grandfathering refers to pre-existing non-conforming. Mm -hmm. um, and, and actually, uh, some of the specific examples that have been discussed seem like they were never conforming even from the date that they were installed. And so, um, in that case, there is no uh, pre existing non conformance, there's just non conformance. And so, um, in those situations, we absolutely do have the ability to enforce upon those as well. And I'll note that the 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 ordinance before you folks does deal specifically with mm -hmm. animated signs mm -hmm. and uh and you'll note that there is a, an added clarification that only the time and the temperature may be animated and, mm -hmm. and um and so yes we we have the enforcement team um now to to work on signs that have animated more than time and temperature yeah and, and jennifer and i charted a path to to do so and embarked upon that path with some non-conforming signs <laughs> and we'll continue that path with others Great, wonderful, well. thank you. And yeah, I, I agree with all my fellow commissioners and, and I'm excited to see the ability for folks in our downtown areas, to, region, you know, area to have signs that look like the old signs and town, you know, it's like one of the coolest parts of our downtown, right, is our neon and, you know, driving into town at night is, is incredible when you come in. Downtown. You know, Downtown, absolutely. When you drive into downtown, and I, I worked out in the valley for a very long time, and came home late at night a lot from that job, and to get downtown and to hit that and to see how beautiful downtown was every night was pretty incredible. So to think that we might get some more signs like that downtown um, is exciting. So thank you. Well, I have nothing substantial to add. You all covered it. Thank you. Um, so this is the first reading. It's been a while since we've done. An ordinance. There's another reading in like 30 days. Is that right? Yes, it will be at the uh, March 21st meeting. And then is it in effect if it passes? Is it in effect immediately or does it? Uh, 30 days. 30, 30 days, days after. after. Thank you. And, and um, if I may interject, I have heard some comments both from the public and from commission members um, regarding signs in the, the city's southern gateway. And so um, please know that as uh, Jennifer and I uh, move forward with, uh, with the team, um, we will, uh, as we start to address the gateway overlay zones, we will take your comments to heart mm -hmm. because they are also uh, reflective of what's in the growth policy to ensure that signage is addressed in the gateways as well. Thanks. Yeah. How fun. Two code enforcement topics for you tonight here in the speaker world. I didn't expect it to go here, but I'm pretty happy it did. So. <laughs> right. So we have a motion by Lyons and a second by Kale. Anything else, Commissioner? Are we ready to vote? Well, All right. Roll call, please. Chair News. Four. Vice Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Motion passes. Next on the agenda resolutions. Okay. First up, oh, just one resolution actually. 
singular. Resolution number 5087. Resolution by the City of Livingston City Commission authorizing the submission of a grant application to FEMA staffing for adequate fire and emergency response. Authorizing the city manager or designee to enter into required contracts for grant funds to hire additional staffing for Livingston Fire Rescue. Mr. Gager. Thank you, Chair Neese. The item before you um, <laughs> is to authorize staff to submit a uh, FEMA safer grant. And the, the, the goal of the safer grant is uh, if, if awarded, we will um, supplement the, the current staff members of the Livingston Fire Rescue and uh, will provide us greater capacity. Um, really uh, important or most important in the summer months um, when the, the park is in, in full swing. And um, this is uh, one step of, of many that uh, Chief Chabalowski and I are taking to review uh, staffing letter levels within Livingston Fire Rescue to ensure that we have adequate response levels. And um, you know, while this is a, uh, a limited duration grant, if it is awarded, it would certainly offer um, additional capacity in the department and uh, provide us an additional time to determine the long range funding models to support the, the staffing that uh, appears to be needed in the fire rescue. So I'll stand for any questions you may have. Thanks, Commissioners. Do you have any questions? I think they were answered last time. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, do we have a motion on this? Is your resolution number is on page 74. Resolution 5087. I'll move to approve resolution 5087 and authorize the chair and city manager to sign the resolution authorizing the city manager mm -hmm. or their designee to apply for FEMA safer funds and execute any contracts or requirements if awarded. Second. Motion by Kale and a second by Friedman. Uh, public comment. Is there anyone that wants to give comment on this resolution? Seeing none, public comment is closed. Commissioners, any comments? I would. Uh, I was glad to see this entered because I had talked with the city manager about this. It's a quite a very important area, and I'm glad to see that we're on it real quick. So mm -hmm. there are some problems there before. So this is excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for looking for funding for us to be able to do this. Um, so this is this is great. Thank you. Yeah. All right, it's all been said. Roll call, please. Chair Nunes. Four. Commissioner Peel. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lee. Four. Motion passes. Moving into the action. Uh, action items. Right. We have discuss approved deny request to create an exception to the enforcement of the open container statute during the Platt Puckett wedding. Mr. Gager. Uh, good evening, Chair Meets. The item before you is uh, a request uh, for an exception to the alcohol consumption restrictions um, and specifically the restriction uh, concerning consumption of beer or liquor in the public right of way or alleys. And we, uh, the city received a uh, special event um, permit application for a wedding in September and the, uh, the, the party to be married um, would like to, to do it publicly and have a, a bit of a street party. And so in order to give, uh, give the celebrants time to plan and arrange, um, they have uh, sought approval of the uh, exception at this meeting. And so I will stand for any questions you may have. Do you all have any questions? Are commissioners invited? Mm -hmm. It's everybody, yeah. <laughs> to the public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe you even have a plus one. Yeah. <laughs> Does that satisfy your yeah. curiosity? <laughs> Other commissioners? I think it sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know this couple is going to be a great time. <laughs> Are you disclosing that? Yeah, yes. I'll just close. <laughs> I do know them. Um, uh, we have to take public comment. So, but first, we need a motion. Do I right. have a motion on action item A? 
Who wants to make this fun motion? Uh, I move to approve the request to create an exception to the enforcement of the open container statute during the flat bucket wedding. I'll second that. Uh, motion by Lyons and a second by Kale. Uh, public comment, please. Seeing none, public comment is closed for action item A. Commissioner comments, I have an, a conflict on that day. Can somebody send me pictures <laughs> yeah. if this passes? Yeah. And I'm not kidding. I really do want to see pictures if this passes. I would ask for a reschedule, but it seems like they have a lot of stuff. I know. I, was, so. I wish I could reschedule too, but I can't. Um, <laughs> any other comments? I, I would I would just say as a as a former and still sometimes event planner, I approve of their getting this done early and their planning schedule. So yeah, good for them. <laughs> Anything else, commissioners? I will say, there's one thing I will say. My 15 year old said that this is the best wedding idea she's ever heard of. So if you could pass that along. She uh, <laughs> gave the stamp of approval of a 15 year old saying this is like the most interesting, awesome sounding wedding. So I think it sounds great. I'm excited that they asked. And I'm mm -hmm. kind of surprised that people aren't asking us this more regularly, right? Seems like maybe a fun place a, to get married. Maybe but. it'll be a trend now. Maybe a bunch of us are going to start renewing our vows on Main Street. <laughs> One of us still needs to get married by that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we're, all, we're about ready to plan by Shirt Kale's wedding downtown. Let's, let's, let's look at the calendar so we can <laughs> Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Um, roll call, please. Four. Vice Chair Kale? Four. Commissioner Freeman? Four. Commissioner Schwartz? Four. Commissioner Lyons? Four. Motion passes. Congratulations to the pass buckets. All right. Next on the agenda action item B the 2030 ADA transition plan update. Mr. Gager. Uh, thank you, Chair Newts. I will invite Martha O'Rourke, our city engineer from the Public Works Department, to walk the commission through the plans for EDA improvements in the city of Livingston in 2023. Martha. Um, good evening. My name is Martha O'Rourke. I'm the chair project manager and engineer for the Livingston Public Works Department. And I'm here to present the 2023. That must be written incorrectly. Did I read it incorrectly? <laughs> I might have read it. Okay. That's a thing I do sometimes. Sorry. It's okay. This is our ADA transition plan update for the year 2023. So, as you can see up here, <laughs> the first slide here, um, this is our most current ADA compliance map showing ADA compliance streets and sidewalks as of 2020. So, it's a little out of date. Um, but this map lives in our City County ArcGIS platform for staff use as our starting point for connectivity increasing projects throughout the city. Um, it's super an update with all the construction that's been going on in our town. So um, we're working with City County GIS staff to update this map. <clears throat> so this next map here is the priority list from our 2019 ADA transition plan, um, which is on our city website. Um, priority projects here, there are only nine. Um, the first one was the O Street Connector Trail, which we completed in 2020. Yep. Um, item B, there is the Wheelchair Accessibility Swing. That was completed in 2021 at the Mike Webb Park on H Street. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have uh, handicap accessible vault toilets at almost every single city park, with the exception of Green Acres Park. Um, priority project number four there is handicap parking on Park Street. This one's a little tricky. Um, it causes some difficulty with regards to safety. It's a very tight corridor, um, heavy traffic load. So although not directly on Park Street, we do have ADA parking at the depot as well as within the downtown area. Mm -hmm. um, so something we could still look into, but it is, it's a tough project. Um, project number five here is increasing sidewalk width at the rail crossing at Fifth Street. So we've been working with MDT, the railroad, and it's it's going to be a big project because it's not just about increasing the width at the railroad. There's a lot that needs to go on with permitting and everything else. And we want to do as much as we can with that crossing 
at the same time. So we've been in contact with them and it's going to be a bigger coordination effort. So we'll keep you updated on that. Um, priority project six on here is the handicap parking and wheelchair access for skate park. So the city public works department is currently working with our engineering firm to design this. And once designed, we are going to request budgeting allocations for construction in 2024. Um, priority item seven is connector to the big hill. So there is a little bit of a path there in the Summit Street right of way, um, but we are working with the HRDC to obtain a legal trail easement in the gully to the west side of the high ground subdivision, that deep gully that's up there. A lot of people use that as a trail right now, but it's not technically legal. So we're working on the finishing touches on that. Um, priority project eight is connector to the small hill. So we had sidewalk connection completed by contractors of the last constructed phase of North South. So that one's all set and done. And then finally, item number nine there is a handicapped crossing at Katie Bunnell Park, which is M Street Park on the north side. We have a location for this set, but it's just so hard to find a contractor to do such a tiny little project. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna keep trying again this year. So next slide is our priority list from the Trails and Access Transportation Plan, which was adopted last April. And it's also on our website. Um, the priority list here is a result of input collected during the plan's public process during the 2021 input phases. Um, that included surveys, public meetings, and also input from local committees the parks and trails. Mm -hmm. um, the cost estimates here are based on 21, 2021 costs, so they are probably low and they don't include any design costs associated. So we'll have to reevaluate each as we get to that. Um, we'll talk about these projects on the next slide, but I wanted to point out one and it's that Yellowstone River Trail. So um, priority project B there. Um, although not kind of described on this list, um, there is a pedestrian bridge crossing at Mayor's Landing in the preliminary design stages with Park County right now. And it's, so this whole trail, as you can see there, it's a big loop and it does cross the city county jurisdiction line. So it will be a big coordination effort. Um, the Public Works Department itself, we hope to coordinate with county to utilize this new bridge for second water main crossing to the east side. Um, and that would provide a looped water main and redundant water supply to the hospital and any future development over there as well. Next slide, please. So this is what we have completed in 2022. Um, the Trails and Active Transportation Plan. Um, Vitruvian Planning from Idaho completed that for us and was adopted by the city in April of last year. Mm -hmm. They worked with a number of our city advisory boards and um, got a lot of community input for that. So also the Starbucks redevelopment project, they added sidewalk adjacent to the, their property. So that helped with some connectivity along Love's Lane back to that Eagle Landing subdivision behind Albertsons. Mm -hmm. And um, we updated a lot of ADA ramps during our 6th and 7th Street water replacement project last summer. Mm -hmm. So now some upcoming work for this year. So I just mentioned that Love's Lane sidewalk connectivity um, and it, it butts up to that railroad property there. Um, so we have a small section to connect from that sidewalk to the depot trail that runs along 89 South there. Mm -hmm. And it turns out we may not actually have an easement for <laughs> Lux Lane at all. So we're working on that. Um, we already have it surveyed and we need to work with not only the railroad, but also MDT to get that. And then once that's all done, we can drop some plans and do a tiny little connection piece there. And then there's also one more vacant lot to the west of the Starbucks property that will need sidewalk as well. And we have that surveyed, but we do not own that property. So we either wait for development or kind of do it ourselves. So that's where we're at with this project. So this next one is our Montana Street Reconstruction Project. This is a big one. Um, it's in our five-year plan, and we are working with the county and MDT on nominating Montana Street Urban Route. It's an urban route um, for reconstruction, complete reconstruction to include curb, gutter, um, new asphalt, street lights, ADA ramps at every intersection, 
and even storm drain inlets on the surface. So we can do the surface work with this um, MDT program. Our goal is to start this in 2028. Um, but before we can do all the surface work, we need to upgrade the sewer and water mains underneath. So that's a public works project that we're hoping to do in the next four years. It's a big one. So I talked about ADA ramp reconstruction. Um, every other year, Public Works Department requests approximately $40,000 in funds allocated for ADA reconstruction projects. Um, so our current priorities for these funds are our Bennett Street sidewalk project. That's priority project A of our active transportation plan. And then also priority project item C, which is the Lewis Street active transportation corridor. So the four intersections here are Lewis and Third, Yellowstone, F and G. Those are the next ones moving outside from the downtown area. Mm -hmm. Um, those have been on our list for the last two years, but it's just becoming increasingly challenging to find a contractor to take on such tiny little projects. So we've started working with our big project contractors to see if they can tag a couple of these on while they have concrete crews in town. Mm -hmm. um, like I mentioned, the 6th and 7th Street, we were able to add an extra ADA ramp there just because they were here and they were willing to do the work for us. So the ADA crossing at Katie Benal Park, uh, Action project number nine from the ADA transition plan. Um, location's been set, couldn't find a contractor. So this year with our regional sewer project in that part of town, they're going to see if they can tag this on for us and give them a try. Mm -hmm. We haven't quite asked them yet, so hopefully this isn't the first time they're doing that. Um, this next one is our 2023 Transportation Alternatives Grant application. Um, we applied for this last year and we're not successful, mm -hmm. but it is for an accessible route between the Livingston Depot and B Street on the north side of the park. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try again this year. Application is due in May. Um, but this year we also hope to tag on some rapid flashing beacons to purchase and install at these five locations in particular. And if you scroll just down just a hair, we can see what they look like down mm -hmm. there on the bottom left there. Um, so Mark's in and out, B Street and Park, Town and Country. I know they have a flashing thing, but it's not quite this robust. Mm -hmm. um, second and Park and then Geyser and Park. Mm -hmm. So if we can get this grant, we can at least do one or two of these. Mm -hmm. And that would help make our ADA crossings a little bit safer. So moving forward, um, Park Street Crossing at Bennett Street, it's not necessarily a listed project on any of these priority lists, but it is. Uh, a project that we've heard a lot about. Mm -hmm. um, so we've started discussions with MDT and the railroad, and it's going to take a bit of coordination to figure out next steps and where we can go from here. Um, in the meantime, we're going to tackle as many of these trails and active transportation plan as well as ADA transition plan projects, and hopefully can find some contractors to help us with any necessary construction. So that's our presentation for the update, and I will try to answer any questions as best I can. No, I, I think Martha covered it quite well. Thank you, Martha. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, we'll stand for any questions the commission may have. Uh, Commissioner Williams. Uh, thank you so much. Um, it's exciting to to see these next steps. I think um, accessibility for, for folks with mobility challenges is really important. I'm glad to see that this is moving forward. I think it's a really critical element of active transportation. Um, you mentioned uh, accessibility at the skate park. That's a particular area of interest to me. Um, I'm curious what, what that's going to look like. And then I might tap on another question that's not quite related to ADA, but about yep. the skate park. So um, as you know, there is plans for a big recreation center down there near the skate park to replace with the recreation center. So we're making sure that whatever we have plan for the skate park will eventually work with the future plans of the recreation center. Um, but for now, it'll be curb all the way around with a sidewalk for part of it and some sort of access to a viewing platform for ADA accessibility. We don't quite have the plans yet. It's been surveyed by our engineers, but no plans yet. But we can share those when we get them. Great. Um, and so there's been some landscaping happening around the skate park lately. Are you aware of that? And can you tell me what's going on? And then I might share a, a note of feedback on that. I don't. I know there's landscaping, but that's our parks department. Okay. Then I will not share it on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I can pass it along. Yeah, I was going to say I, I'd encourage you to. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
right now there's this like fine gravel um, that's kind of like a zero scape situation mm -hmm. um, and it gets blown into the park um, and with the smooth concrete on the park and the small wheels of a skateboard or rollerblades or whatever, it, it's very hazardous. Oh, I've been the victim of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so it, it, it can't be the final landscaping <laughs> solution there because it, it just, it gets tracked into the park, it gets blown into the park mm -hmm. um, and it's legitimately like really mm -hmm. dangerous. Mm -hmm. so I can definitely pass that along. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. I guess. Any other questions, commissioners? I think you covered it very well. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Otherwise, I will go with you. Go ahead. Yeah, you, I think I'm, I don't about what I'm going to work my way through. I'm going to start on the first page. Who's? I'm curious about this logo. Oh. I'm wondering is like somebody know. funding this that's not us? Do you know whose logo this is? I believe that's one that was created by Explore Livingston, if I'm not mistaken. He's Explore Livingston. They're the um, okay. business improvement. Yeah, exactly. Are they funding this? Not that I'm aware of, no. no. I just would like to make yeah. a note that free advertising. Yeah. Um, perhaps if it's difficult to use the city logo, maybe we should find a city logo that's easier to use. I think it's something that um, the commission has talked about more than once is the city logo. And I can bring that up in the comments, but I just wanted to note that as somebody who's elected by the people of Livingston that it's nice to have a city logo on city things, so, unless somebody else is funding it, in which case it makes sense to me that maybe you're um, And moving on to other content in this, um, I'm really excited, first of all, Martha, that you're here, that we got to meet you. Because you're a name we hear and this is, we don't get a, See very often. I was really excited to hear about the connector to the big hill. That was something that came up a long time ago in a conversation with HRDC. So thank you. Um, they actually own that entire property. Yeah, I remember that. I remember it was a, I believe I was sitting over there at the time where Tori is, where Commissioner Lyons is, and I asked if they would be open to working with the city for an easement. So I'm glad to see that you all pick that up and are working. Yeah. With this them was also a Matthew Menard <laughs> continuation. Oh, his ears must be burning tonight. <laughs> Um, well, thank you for picking it up because it's not lost on me that he's not here and you are. So thank you for doing it. Um, I'm also really excited about Katie Bonnell Park. I'm excited about um, this big Montana Street project. I'm excited to see every other page you're talking about north side projects. Um, as a commissioner that lives, the only commissioner on the north side, I'm aware that um, the people on the north side also want equitable attention. And so I'm really happy also to see all of these crossings on Park Street being dealt with and the Park Street projects in general, because that's the dividing line between us. And it is not always safe or easy for pedestrians to cross. So thank you for prioritizing it and putting these things into the packet. It's a really nice balance and probably the best I've ever seen since I've been on the commission. So thank you. Um, any other Comments that you have oh, or ahead. questions? Doesn't take much to excite you. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. That's fair. It doesn't. I yield. I have, I have one sort of comment question um, on the, the slide for Trails and Active Transportation Plan, this one. Um, and it's got the priority of uh, projects here, and it says top tier projects in order of priority ranking. I believe I remember just as kind of the put in our, our thoughts that the the consultant when he did when they did the um, presentation of this plan said you know these are the priorities but don't right like skip one to get to the other if you have what you need to get to you know like if you can't get A and B done go ahead and do C so I'm just hoping if that makes sense um, just so that we're not waiting to get $200,000 to get something done, but we've got $10,000 to do something, you know, then we should do that. So um, I just wanted to sort of put that out there as a reminder. I don't know, Commissioner Lyons, if you remember that and that, but just um, as a thought that mm -hmm. we don't have to do A before we do B if we can get to B first, so. Mm -hmm. uh, any other things before motion? All right, how about a motion on? 
uh, this transition plan. I don't see, uh, is there a staff report in here with this? I don't see it. So do you need a, do we need to vote on this? Or just no, it doesn't it? Okay, good. Great, then I don't need it. Forget that. We don't need a motion. Do you need anything else from us on the plan? Any other comments? No. You're good. Okay. Good. Thank you, Martha. Um, no, we don't need to take public comment on it, do we? Since it's just a discussion. Okay. Um, let's see. So next on the agenda is action item C. So I will go ahead and move to enter into closed session to discuss both personnel matters and litigation pursuant to Title II, Chapter 3, Section 203 of the Montana Code Annotated. Do I have a second? I'll second. So we have a motion by Newts and a second by Kale. Roll call, please. By Newts. Four. Vice Chair Kale. Four. Commissioner Friedman. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyon. Four. Motion passes. And we're gonna take our break before we move into closed session, yeah. before we start. Um, so it takes a minute to get the room set up. Should we give ourselves like 10 minutes? We'll see if that works. That'd be plenty. Yeah, plenty. Thank you, ma'am. That 10 minutes sounds perfect. Oh. It's my guess. Yeah. Um, pretty good. That, that was a bit long. Six, so I'm wearing it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think my chef, you were about to go for a sufficient five seconds to break. I don't want to jump in there. Break. What did you read in the last? I did. Remarkably, I didn't know that there's no term in there. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you know, I mean, there's no term. Yeah, I'm good. I was sick last week and now my wife is sick. Oh, we can. Yeah, let's let the reporter in and have him in the Thank you. Is there anybody else out there, Sean? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are you ready? We are. Awesome. So now, um, where's my agenda? Right here. Now. So now we're to the comments portion of our agenda. So, Mr. Gager. Uh, thank you all for attending. And I would like to welcome to the community Sean Batura from the Livingston Enterprise. He is uh, here and I, Sean, I'll say I've really enjoyed reading more local content in the newspaper over the last week since you arrived. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you. And, uh, and to the, the community at large, I would say um, it's going to be a cold one again later this mm -hmm. week with possibly some snow. So thank you everyone for keeping your sidewalks clear and uh, please take a moment to check on your, your elderly and, and single neighbors over the course of the week as the temperatures dip because it should be a cold one. Mm -hmm. And please know if you need any help, don't hesitate to call the city 406-823-6000. <laughs> is it? Commissioner Lyons. Um, I don't think I have anything to add this evening. I've, I've expended my my vocabulary this tonight, so whoa. <laughs> it you mind. better get that in the news. <laughs> Did you get that? Take that one down. No, I'm just joking, Commissioner Schwartz. Um, I'm going to piggyback off Grant. Say welcome, Sean. Um, uh, enjoyed reading your articles. Actually, talked to um John Carroll Saturday. In between him roughing basketball games, <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing good things happen with the enterprise. I think um, mm -hmm. after talking to John, you know, it takes a while to work things out. So mm -hmm. be patient, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm pleased. Yeah, you know, we discussed you know same thing, more local issues. I can get the AP on my phone, you know, mm -hmm. you know some stuff obviously, but. Um, but no, other than that, I have nothing to say. I'm, I'm golden, I gotta go shovel snow. You shovel, you shovel on the north side my house? <laughs> on my little John Deere tractor. Oh, mm -hmm. Doesn't stuff. the wind just blow it away on the north side? Yeah, that's a good point. I'll never tell. <laughs> that's our secret, Commissioner Freeman. Hmm, this is a tough one, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh. I think it was in a, in a very difficult position, you know, being here before, during, and after. Yeah. 
and uh, was not getting the right information. Right. Which doesn't help you make decisions correctly. So it's mm -hmm. basically where it's at. And uh, yeah. it was a terrible period. I was going to quit the commission at one point. Um, I just didn't like the mechanics of what was going on. <clears throat> and uh, I had this year to finish, and I had, I had one more. But I wasn't getting the right information, which biased me. But anything else going on, I'm trying to figure out, you know, this thing doesn't add up. And uh, I was misled an awful lot. So, um, I want to apologize for that because it's hard to make decisions when I don't have the right information. But Lisa, Faith, you know, the, the ones that were here were impacted. And the question was trying to get the right information. And the right information wasn't out there when you were asking questions. So I'll buy a share in the future. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we're at right now. We got a great team. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I, I want to keep this. <laughs> and apologize for anything past because they had the wrong. Tried to get the right stuff, but just never got the right information. So a lot of it was the rid of that guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where it was. And every time I stepped into it, you know, you had Lisa, you had Courtney, you had Faith. You're rebounding with people who've been here before, but you weren't up to date on what the hell was going on, really going on. And uh, it was hard to make any decisions or how you looked at things. I'm certainly glad right, sitting here right now to be part of this group. <laughs> what happened before, I really want to apologize if I made wrong information, but that's what I was fed was wrong information. So terrible period. So I hope we can resolve it and get on with business and do the stuff we're supposed to do. I yield. Thank you. Ms. Shergill? I am proud to be a member of this commission. I'm proud to sit right here next to this man every every meeting. Um, so yes, uh, stay warm out there. It's gonna get very cold. Um, and I understand the shoveling of the box. I live in a corner lot. <laughs> it's difficult. It's very it's difficult. Like I've heard you talk about it this week. <laughs> yeah. so, you should call Quentin to help you. I, it's horrible. It's horrible. I know. I've, I've, I've got several. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yes, well, clean dress. those blocks. I, I, I clean mine. Um, we tried very hard to get it clean, um, but stay warm. And um, I'm really excited about things moving forward in our city. Uh, I know that Mr. Gager got started with uh, some growth policy implementations in the last couple of weeks with the planning and zoning boards. And um, I look forward to seeing how that moves forward. I know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to start. Um, I want to start with you and say thank you for your apology. It has been really hard for me to be treated a certain way or talked about a certain way. Yeah. I forgive you and I am glad that you're here. And before I finish my comments, I would love to give you a hug if I can. Thank you. No, thank you, Mel. I really appreciate you acknowledging that because it's um it's been a tough time for me too. Oh so thank you. And now for the rest of my comments, I want to say I'm so excited that we had a young member of our community come tonight, Emmett. Thank you all for allowing me to break with tradition so that we could all support him and his vision for public art, which is amazing. Um, so thank you for letting me break our own rules yeah. so that we could give him accolades. I also wanted to bring up the logo. I am. I would love it. We talked about it before when we were. Our capacity was much different that um, maybe it's time for an updated logo that's easier for staff to use and easier for commissioners to use on, it's easier to replicate, easier to, um, you know, put in emails or on these like presentations right. tonight. I 
if staff is using logos that aren't ours, it's clear to me that maybe it's time we. Yeah, it's cute, but and it's, it's, it's time for yeah, right, rebrand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if Grant has capacity, <laughs> Mr. Gager has capacities that um, I don't, I'm not sure what you need from us, but it's something we brought up in the past with previous administrators. Well, I don't and it's time. Um, there was a conversation and some votes and money put towards signage at parks and trails. And so I think um, that information should be somewhere. Right. Um, Jean Marie will certainly have lots of information on that if you haven't gotten already. And if there's a way to like fold that into the conversation, it seems like that's kind of where we were at in the past. Right. Because um, we needed something, you know, consistent. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if you have a park district, which is separate from the city, okay, that'll be, that would be a different thing, you know, but um, still you want to be compatible somewhat. Yeah. Uh, and I want to acknowledge um, also moving on, I want to acknowledge that something was brought up tonight by staff about a wellness center location that's been determined. Um, I believe that that is not quite accurate, uh, that those decisions actually come through the commission and we haven't had them. So I understand that there's like, um, Commissioner Freeman was alluding to, there's been some misinformation um, moving around. It sounds to me like maybe the wellness center is one of the topics where there's been some um, assumptions made about where the commission's at or what votes the commission has made and we're not there yet. Sounds like Mr. Gager is going to have that on an upcoming upcoming agenda for us, so we can have a public conversation about mm-hmm. um, a future potential recreation center. So that would be welcomed. I think that would be welcomed by me. I think other commissioners have expe- expressed interest over the past year. Also, so <clears throat> just wanted to flag that for you all. And then, lastly, I wanted to share with you, Mr. Gager. I've already been getting positive feedback about your newsletter. Okay. In case you haven't gotten it yet, people are really liking it. I really liked your. Uh, mm-hmm your section on roots and pipes, actually, because that's something the commission hears a lot about is um, tree roots and pipes. So it was nice. I don't know if that was your idea or someone else's, but it was great to see it right before we would ex- be expecting to get comments from the public. So fantastic, I think. Well, thank you. That I will be honest, that one came from Helen out in uh, Public Works. So I'll, I'll pass that along to her. Yeah. And um, she probably gets the calls too. Uh, she, yes, she does. That's and, great. And so if if uh, if there's ever any questions on content or if you folks have any content that you would like to get out to the community, please don't have some more. Yeah, I think it's really great. It seems like uh, yeah. folks are really enjoying the updated, concise messaging. Seems well received. So thank you for doing that. Um, that's all on my list. Um, motion to adjourn. Would you like to make it? You want to say so moved? We'll say it. (laughs) Say so moved. Yeah, so moved. All right. So motion by Friedman, second by. Uh, yeah, second. By Shorts. All in favor, say aye. Aye. This city commission meeting is adjourned at eight twenty p.m. Another one before the 8.30 mark. Good job, Mr. Gagers. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go.